Mina, Konbanwa, Jesus Freaking Gamer here. Here with the message, and this is one of those questioning messages where I kind of get it, I kind of don't. Be very interested to know what you think in the comments down below. This is supposed to be typing, keep that in mind. It's 2 Kings chapter 9. I'm going to start at verse 1. And I'm just going to, and then after that, it'll be like a summary of the rest of the chapter. Although, first few verses summarize the chapter pretty well. And Elisha the prophet called one of the sons of the prophets and said to him, Get yourself ready. Take this flask of oil in your hand and go to Ramoth Gilead. Now when you arrive at that place, look there for Jehu, the son of Jehoshaphat, the son of Nimshi, and go in and make him rise up from among his associates and take him to an inner room. Then take the flask of oil and pour it on his head and say, Thus says the Lord, I have anointed you king over Israel. Then open the door and flee and do not delay. So the young man, the servant of the prophet, went to Ramoth Gilead, and when he arrived, there were the captains of the army sitting. And he said, I have a message for you, commander. Jehu said, For which one of us? And he said, For you, commander. Then he arose and went into the house, and he poured the oil on his head and said to him, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, I have anointed you king over the people of the Lord, over Israel. You shall strike down the house of Ahab your master, that I may avenge the blood of my servants, the prophets, and the blood of all the servants of the Lord at the hand of Jezebel. For the whole house of Ahab shall perish, and I will cut off from Ahab all the males in Israel, both bond and free. So I will make the house of Ahab like the house of Jeroboam, the house, or the house of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, and like the house of Baasha, the son of Ahijah. The dog shall eat Jezebel on the plot of ground at Jezreel, and there shall be none to bury her. And he opened the door and fled. And Jehu proceeds to do just that. He openly declares himself, well, with his, I should say his servants or the people around him, the soldiers, captains, etc. around him, proclaim him as king over Israel, but he didn't voice any objections. He drove straight over to where the king was. What was that king's name? Joram. He drove straight to where Joram was, and Joram had been wounded in battle against the king of Syria. Jehu drove up right against him, two guys, the king saw that someone was approaching, sent two men to, to uh, ask him, you know, are you coming in peace? And his response to both of them was, what do you have to do with peace? Follow me. And both of those servants went out and followed Jehu. And so he then proceeded to kill Joram. He also killed Ahaziah. Was it Ahaziah? The king of Judah. Yeah, it was Ahaziah. He went and proceeded to kill him as well, since he was there at Israel to see how Joram was, since he was concerned about him, since he'd been injured in battle. So Jehu goes and kills both of those kings. And he also proceeds to go ahead and kill Jezebel as well. So, open treason, declared, and done in the name of the Lord. And Jehu was successful on it. And apparently this fulfilled... A few words of the Lord. Um, the beginning of the end of Ahab's line and the end of Jezebel's life and the fact that there wasn't even a body left to bury because the dogs ate her. Jehu also, when he walked into the room where Jezebel was, he said, Who in here is on my side? And when um, it was two or three of the eunuchs who basically turned to him and he said, Throw her off the ledge. So Jehu apparently had an ability to turn people to him. He had a certain charisma and he was able to persuade people very quickly, you need to come over to my side. So that's an interesting ability in and of itself. And so he commits open treason in the name of the Lord. It's very different from what David did. Whereas David was anointed king over Israel, he let Saul perish by other means. Whereas he, Jehu, openly declared war on not just the king of Israel, whom he was there to overthrow, but on the king who was there visiting him, who was his friend and who was in alliance with him. He killed both of those kings. And apparently this was in the name of the Lord. And it's so radically different from what David did that I'm questioning, did Jehu do this correctly? It was in accordance with the word of the Lord, but did he do this correctly? Is this something that was honoring God? So I'm going to label this as part one of this message. I haven't read ahead and take a, taken a sneak peek at what is upcoming. I've read it before, but I don't remember the story in all of its details, so... We're going to be finding this out together. I will give thoughts and comments and a conclusion, hopefully, by the time I finish this series. So, there you are.
And really, yeah, that's it. It leaves it on that question. Was did he he fulfilled the word of the Lord? Did he do it in the right spirit? Did he do it correctly? Did he do it as the Lord wanted him to do it? We'll find out. Thank you guys very much for watching this. I love you and God bless.